Welcome back to the channel, Crypto Trend Trader with a quick update on Bitcoin. Before we get started, I'd like to remind you it's not financial advice. I'm not your financial advisor. These markets are extremely volatile, so please do your own research and trade responsibly. All right, so we're looking at the uh, Coinbase chart. I'm on the four hour. We're looking at Bitcoin. And uh, basically, I want to uh, do a little sum up here and uh, look at this price action and see what was it telling us and what were the indicators telling us uh, to see this move happen, uh, you know, in real time. So um, first, I want to start right here uh, with this sell signal. And we're going to talk about how to spot like divergence between an indicator and price action. And uh, essentially what we're looking for is uh, on the TJD jewel thief here in the middle. Uh, I'm going to zoom in on that one and you'll see what happened is we basically get the cross between the blue and the purple here to the downside and it gives the sell signal. But at the same time that's happening, we're getting a massive spike down here like to the bottom lower than any previous spikes like we've seen so here like previously when we saw a similar signature we got the cross between the blue and the purple we got the sell signal but the cross is way up here above like the 60 area as where when you get the cross here we're at like 52 and then you see the knife sticks down here and the knife only sticks down to like 45 as where here the knife is actually like negative seven so it's actually like outside of like you know your typical zone like typically it will stop around like the zero area right here is like pretty much as low as it will go now it can keep going though uh, so that's how you know it's a powerful sell signal but you're getting a powerful sell signal and you're getting a powerful like buy signal basically at the same time so even if you didn't want to buy right there you definitely would know you don't want to be shorting right there and then also we're at the bottom of that channel when we hit this area so you're shorting into support with mixed signals basically from your indicator oscillator so you wouldn't take that signal obviously as where with this previous signal that we got you know you're it, it doesn't have as many things telling you like uh, mixed signals. So, and now here, what we're going to pay attention to is the divergence now that it tells us uh, on the single indicator compared to price action. So you'll see right here when we get our close, it's right at that 8700 range. And then here we retest that same area. And once again, we come almost exactly to 8700 on the four hour, get the close there, get the test down, and then. Uh, you know come back to the start and then get the green close so same thing we get a sell off we attempt to push lower we're unable to do so and then again right here we were at the bottom of our channel that we've been in and here we we're at the heart line of the channel which is like the 50 percent point of it so essentially that's telling us okay we're at support we're at support we're at the same level we're at the same level so what would you expect the the indicator to tell you you know something similar so here you're getting the sell signal and the really low like stab here with the knife as we're here you're getting the buy signal and you're getting a much less severe stab of the knife so this is divergence on the indicator so here you were getting that sell signal which you were able to invalidate because essentially you have the knife stabbing down here at the bottom telling you this should be potentially setting up for a buy signal so then again you get now the knife sticks back down and now look we have a massive divergence between the knife so the knife here is way lower than it is right here but on the actual price action price action is at the same place so that's a divergence that's a bullish divergence it means it took a ton more energy um, the first time to get price action down to there and then we bounce a little bit and then it took way less energy this time uh, way less selling pressure and price went equally as low so what that's telling you is they're running out of ammunition you're running out of sellers and then here you immediately get the buy signal you're at a support level you're doing essentially it's a double bottom retest right here with divergence uh, and then we're printing like greens on the TJD TD MACD uh, so that's telling you potentially we're gonna get like a strong push up here uh, now again you might want to take profits when you hit the resistance here or you might stay in this trade depending uh, you know, but essentially, obviously, in this case, uh, we know we broke back out at which point in time what we were expecting to happen is uh, we're expecting for this to break out of the channel and then get our measured move uh, retest of the breakdown, which is this white line here. So if we zoom way out, uh, we remember that was the white of the channel that we had been moving in this whole time. And we were talking about how everybody got very, very bearish when we broke out of that channel, but we hadn't broken the parabolic trend line yet. And we hadn't put in a lower low 
Um, so that was the most important things that we were paying attention to. Now, essentially what happened is we came all the way back up and what we were expecting, like I said, is the measured move of the channel, um, which in this case, what you do is uh, you just take the top of the channel to the bottom of the channel. And then from the breakout point, that's essentially going to be uh, your measured move, which in this case has, you know, essentially already played out. Uh, but we can leave that there. So that's exactly where we're at right now is the measure move of the channel. So that's how we measure that breakout. Now what we would expect to happen is when this measure move breaks out that we would hit one of these key fib levels. And now if you remember the 618 is the most substantial fib level. Now previously when we came back up to it we were able to get above it but then we sold back off and couldn't hold it. So now when we sold back down here we, we uh, came down essentially to on the yellow uh, or orange fib right here rather. Uh, we came down to like the 382 essentially and then get our push back up. I was expecting this to, you know, basically top out somewhere between the 618 and, uh, you know, the measured move. So essentially at this point in time, I think we're getting ready to top out. Um, I didn't necessarily think that we were going to break back into this channel and hold it as support. But uh, realistically, you know, if you fib, the, the orange fib is from this peak right here to uh, the bottom right down here as where the red fib is from this peak right here down to this bottom right here. But both of them will line up in, all, in like a lot of ways but also be different in a lot of ways too. But you can see how we interact with like the red one. We come up to the 236, sell back off and that's where we put in, you know, essentially like the, the same low again. And then when we come back up, you know, we validate at that point in time. We come back up and then we move, uh, you know, almost immediately. We get above the 382, break up, stop at the 0.5 break up and then find support on the 618 so at this point in time it looks like we're going to continue moving up so if we continue moving up it's a high likelihood we get a push up here to like 96 uh 69 or whatever uh where the 786 is and the 618 we have now our red 786 our orange 786 and the purple 618 all lined up right here uh like almost perfectly at 96 30 so at this point in time i think there's a very high likelihood that we're going to come up here uh, to like this 96.50. Now we could top out at the measure move, but Fibonacci's are technically like much stronger um, as uh, you know as indicators uh, than like just your typical measured move is, uh, because it's going to be based on like bots and algorithms rather than just like a percentage or dollar value uh, movement in price action. So, um, so that's what I'm looking for right now is basically like um, on the smaller time frames. Uh, I'm basically looking for the trend to or should I say, you know, this isn't really like the dominant trend at this time. The dominant trend is down. We're still putting in like a lower high than our previous high. So essentially all this is, the this is like the um, bullish retracement of the bearish downtrend. So, you know, the breakout appears bullish, but the actual pattern itself is bearish and tells you there's going to be continuation to the downside. Now, it doesn't have to be. It's not 100%, but it's the predominant trend will continue you get the breakout it's essentially a rel relief rally to the upside and then we sell back off and eventually put in a lower low um, from this previous low here and potentially threaten that low as well so um, but essentially all we're doing right now is just forming like another big triangle um, so look I'm looking for uh, basically this trend to top out um, right around this area here we could get it up to as high as like the 886 here um, but essentially like this is what I'm looking at um, right now, I think we're going to get just a little bit more strength coming up here, uh, but I don't necessarily think we're going to make it back up to the 10,000 range and, uh, you know, threaten that area uh, just quite quite yet. But, um, you know, we could essentially sell off right here and start moving back down. Um, it's very important we pay attention uh, to the daily close coming up. We've got just over an hour. So uh, if we see strength going into the close, it's much more likely that we can get continuation back up here and uh, continue inside this channel. If we see weakness coming into the close here, you know, it's very likely that uh, we're going to get that continuation down here. Um, you know, if we cannot hold uh, the white bottom support line of the channel and then we can come down here again, retest the parabolic trend line and see if that holds, you know, puts in another higher low. And then I think the more times that happens, the more likely we are to move to the upside. So, uh, but nothing really has changed um, in the long term. You know, essentially we're getting like the... You know, we call it the accumulation and distribution zones. Uh, we're getting the distribution zone. It's all red through here. And uh, we know that, you know, typically the stronger signal is going to be all red through here. And then we get the hard sell at the end of it. So what we're looking for now is the red to continue um, until the trend, like, starts maxing out. But when the um, blue 
leaves the bullish control zone and we get the hard sell signal and we get a couple of red histograms on the TJD, TD, MACD. Uh, we're probably going to uh, be taking another short to the downside and, uh, you know, basically uh, looking for the continuation move. So, uh, but we are coming up on the end of the weekly and the end of the monthly. Uh, so we could see a lot of crazy action uh, come in here. Um, this is basically just the same thing happening though. Uh, we're waiting to see, can we get back above uh, this yellow line on the long-term parabolic trend line. Uh, this one is much more important than like the four hour, obviously. Uh, but again, you know, it's very clear on here that we're still putting in a lower low if we cannot take out that previous one at uh, like 96.75 or whatever. So that's what we're looking for. We're looking to close outside of this pattern and we're looking to see like continuation with volume at this point in time, you know, since the bottom here, we've essentially just seen like the volume trailing off. Um, we did see like a little bit of a pickup here at the top, um, you know, but essentially like typically the when you see like the big volume come in, it represents like a top or a bottom reversal. So here you see a bunch of volume coming in because it represents sell volume and buy volume. And here again, you had sell volume and buy volume. Here you have buy volume and sell volume and buy volume and sell volume so you know essentially like that's why you see so much more volume is because you're getting buying and selling as where typically when you're moving up like this you're getting mostly just buying typically when you're moving down like this you're getting mostly just selling so you don't see as much volume because you're not getting buyers and sellers fighting you know to break out or essentially or hold support uh, or break through resistance etc so um, I would expect at this point in time, though, you know, still to see continuation back down to the downside. Uh, we're at the top of, you see, with like the parabolic um, or the uh, binary pivots, like the purple, we're at the top of the range there. As where the bottom of the range is all the way down here at 3,800 because of that wick we got down there. Um, so, you know, this is the most dangerous place to be taking longs. Now, if we do hang out here for a long time, does it start looking more likely that we're going to get a move up? Yeah, I mean, if we literally just consolidate here long enough, you know, we essentially just get a time breakout. So I don't think it's bad if we just keep consolidating here. But, you know, based on statistics and what's happened previously, like the longer we spend at this red line right here, the more likely we are to get like a, you know, powerful sell off. So, you know, that's what we're going by. And, uh, you know, technical analysis, you know, works until it doesn't. So we're going to keep playing the predominant trend. Uh, you know, until the predominant trend flips over. Uh, now, looking at the weekly TJD, TD, MACD, as you can see, you know, it looked really promising. We're getting this massive move up here, and then all of a sudden we get a massive dump back off. Same thing again, we're getting the massive move up here, and the difference was we were still blue and uptrending, you know, technically on the moving average, as we're now we're red and downtrending. So what that means is, is when it's blue, it's less likely to act as resistance, uh, but more likely to act as support when you come down to it. And when it's red, it's less likely to act as support if you're above it and more likely to act as resistance if you're below it. Um, so at this point in time, we want to look out for a very similar signature to this right here. Or if we get continuation to the upside and break above it, you know, we want to look for consolidation and then continuation. So, um, but this is a very crucial time in the market. And, uh, you know, this is where people feel FOMO the most is at tops and bottoms. So, uh, you know, when you start feeling that and you start hearing all the bullish technicals and, you know, people start getting you pumped up and you start feeling that FOMO, usually you feel that at the top or, you know, at the bottom. And it's usually a counter indicator to the, uh, you know, to the move that's coming. So, um, yeah, so that's what we're looking at at this point in time. Just wanted to do a uh, quick recap as we're coming up at like the end of the week uh, close. And, uh, you know, remember that we did close this weekly outside and then immediately got a bearish engulfing right afterwards. And now here we're pushing up again. So even if we do get this close after the, the weekend and everything, even if we do close back out, it's like how much can we even validate that if it's just going to do the same thing again and sell back off. So essentially what we're looking for as like a, you know, confirmed breakout, we're looking for an open and a close outside of this area. So if we opened, like say we closed right here and then the next candle opened right here, then we want to wait and see where does this candle close at? Does it just close in the same spot or above it outside of the breakout point? If it does, we will validate that as a, uh, you know, uh, confirmed candle close.
uh, breakout basically. And then as far as like the yellow parabolic trend line of this massive predominant trend uh, that goes back literally like years upon years upon years, uh, when you come up to this right here and we've essentially broken down from it after we found support, we dumped below it and now we've come up and retesting it. So, you know, if we essentially break out and take out this previous high right here and get like confirmation close above this point, you know, to me, that's extremely bullish. We basically have regained the parabolic trend line and can continue moving back up to the upside. But again, if we just continue to consolidate here and then we sell back off, all it does is just puts in a lower high and then essentially just like confirms to the market uh, that we're going to just continue um, in a downtrend. So well, that's it for today, guys. Crypto Trend Trader. And I'm out of here.